as the story goes, you know, I'd moved to LA to write and direct. And uh, out, straight out of UVA, me and a buddy drove out here and I had looked up all the alumni who had from UVA who worked in the business and kind of did the rounds and was able to get a job in, in the mailroom at Columbia, which then I was able to find another opportunity at Castle Rock. That's where Rob Reiner and uh, Glenn Padnick and, uh, are they going to get mad if I don't know their names? Um, anyways, you know, Castle Rock was like hot at the time. It was a you know, production company and they had all come from Norman Lear, you know, and um, I was starting in the mailroom and worked up from the mailroom there, became a PA on some TV shows. And then eventually it was Rob Reiner's assistant, set assistant on Misery, which was a fantastic experience because uh, I wanted to write and direct. And what better was like going to college and watching a, a pro, he and Barry Sonnenfeld working together with Kathy Bates and Jimmy Kahn. I mean, goodness. So after that was done, went back to the company and uh, was got into a location. I was working up the production ladder, you know, and got into location managing and scouting. And my first big gig was being the location manager on A Few Good Men, which, you know, at the time probably shouldn't have had a debt job because it's a big movie. And I hadn't had anything to that level up to them, but they really liked me there and they knew I would hustle my butt off. And then I was out, I came to the office one day and I was walking through and I bumped into Rob because he's directing it, and he says, hey, you know, I know you want to write and direct, but have you ever acted? I said, nah. He goes, well, you know about the role of Dawson? I said, of course. He goes, well, why don't you come in? I just, I don't know, just come in, see audition, see how you do. Just trust me. And I was like, okay, right? And I was smart enough to listen to the voice in my head that said, hey, go call up a coach. A buddy, my roommate at the time knew of a coach, Julie Arioli. He said, call her up. And so I got with her and we worked on it. And uh, I went in and auditioned. And it's, you know, I, don't, I have no idea what a good audition and bad audition is, quite honestly. And went in and, and did it. And then I left and went back to my job of being, I was like crazy stressed about these locations for a few good men with Tom Cruise and all these people. I'm running around and I get a call. Hey, you got a call back. Oh, what do I do for that? Yeah, you got to come in and just, <laughs> all right, came back in. Do it. <laughs> so they brought me back a bunch of times. And then I remember the last time I did it, and he, Rob stands up. He goes, well, I got a big decision to make. And I'm like, yeah because I saw Morris Chestnut and Cuba Gooding and all these other guys in the lobby. I'm sure you do, right? I got, I got to go find a barracks, <laughs> you know? So this movie. whole time, your hopes like aren't even up for it. You're, I, you're just doing it because he's saying he said He said, come yeah. and do it, right? Yeah. Hey, I didn't want to disappoint him. Can't say no to Rob Reiner. He said, yeah. come in and audition. I'm helping him out, giving him some ideas. I, I don't know about that. I'm just thinking, <laughs> hey, if the man said to come in and do it, yeah. why not? Yeah. And so uh, a few days later, I get up a page, date myself, from his office. And I, I, I call and his assistant gets on. She goes, hold up a minute. She's kind of giggling. And I see Rob gets on and he goes, hey, welcome to the movie business. We're offering you, I'm offering this job and a few good men is Dawson. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still, it's like, wow, that's okay. And I remember the pay phone where I was in Beverly Hills right across from the the Beverly Center. That's awesome. Right? There's a medical <laughs> building there. I know there's no payphone anymore because they don't exist. But the funny thing is, I got that job. And then I went to the head of production, uh, Jeff Stock. And I said, hey, Jeff, you know, I just, Rob gave me that role in a few good minutes. He goes, I know, I know, it's exciting. I said, yeah, but you know, do you think I could still, like, be the location manager <laughs> and do the role? He goes, Wolf, you should probably just focus on the job. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so probably some one of the best advice I got at the time. Because, you know, and then, right, so I remember going home and sitting, and I had a window just like that, sitting at the window, looking out and thinking, like, kind of like, what's, what's happening? What just happened? I, I'm in, wait a minute, I'm in a movie with Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, and Demi, what's, what's going on? And I, I worked with Julie, and we kept working on the role, and then we had the table reading. Right, and we're over at uh, Culver City at the one of those big studios, and you walk in. It's that typical. They got the long tables in a big square, right? 
And so I go in and I'm early because I don't want to be late. And I'm sitting there like the, you know, the fresh bunny. <laughs> and in rocks Demi Moore. In walks Kevin Bacon. In walks, you know, uh, 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 Pollock. Um, Kiefer Sutherland. And then Tom Cruise. And then Jack Nicholson. I'm like, what the hell? What am I doing? <laughs> and we sit down and we start reading. And they're just like fire, you know? But they're just reading it. And I'm like, got my finger on the page where I got my first line, of course, you know. Just and holding I'm, it there. I'm holding it. I'm like seeing the page. Okay, five, five pages left. Three pages left. And then some water dripped on my page. I'm like, it's a leak in the building. There ain't no leak. I'm sweating. <laughs> and then my, my turn to speak. And it was like a volcano happened. <laughs> Just hit my line. And everybody laughed, right? Because they're like, they knew the story. They knew, yeah, they okay. knew how I got it. And they, they just saw his like guy. Like, but here's the amazing thing. They all knew the story. But to a person, even Tom Cruise, so supportive. Mm. He came up to me. He was like, hey, welcome on the project. If you need anything, you want to rehearse, you want to go over lines, anything, don't hesitate. Reach out to me. We'll work. And I was like, you know. At the time, you go, okay, but then you realize later on how huge that was, mm -hmm. you know? And any of them could have given me sort of attitude of like, you know, that guy who got the job. It was the guy who got the job because he knew Rob Reiner. Right. You know, was the negative of that, the, which I understand, quite honestly. Uh, but none of them gave me that, and especially the, the thing with Tom. That's why he's so smart. He's such a great businessman. And an actor, he he knows that the weakest link is the strongest link in the movie. You know, mm. where if I was not, if I didn't bring my work, the movie would not work. So he could have been like, "Who's this scrub?" As opposed to, "Hey, whatever you, we're going to make sure you're ready." You know, and for him to extend himself like that was a great lesson. You know, um, that I hope you know, hoping in your career you can return that kind of favor in a way or 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 um expression in a way you know uh so um, and then yeah we shot it and you know everybody knew it was a good movie um but i don't think we all anybody realized how iconic it would be so many years later yeah it's legendary you know? yeah it, it's it's used in law schools and you know it's just got it's shown constantly on TV, you know, and so you can't handle the truth. <laughs> uh, and you know, listen, we when we shot that, right? We had the whole courtroom, and they went, they shot Jack first, I think first, because he had to go to Lakers game probably soon, because <laughs> he's Jack. But he stayed, of course, until he left. And as they went around the room, he did that performance like you saw on camera. It wasn't like it was cameras off of him. Now he's just phoning it in, saying words. He gave to each actor so they could do their work, you know, which is like another, like, this is how the pros do it, you know? He was, he was, he was there for everybody else, you know? Um, and so... It was, you know, one of those experiences that <clears throat> I'm, you know, eternally grateful for. Uh, uh, you know, it's one of those I don't, I don't know how what I did to get that, you know, to get that. But I was fortunate. I showed up for myself, and things aligned. It's all about, you know, things aligned, you know, and it worked out. And uh, it's been a wild ride since then, because it's I always say it's. A, it's a good problem to have, but I wouldn't, I don't suggest you start at that level. You know, I didn't have any acting experience. And what happened was I was acting truthfully because I didn't know any better. But then once the expectations set in afterwards, and then the fear of meeting those expectations set in, the acting began. And the bad habits of trying to perform began. And just really trying to stay afloat from, you know, I was terrified and, and so many expectations. And I showed up sometimes for myself and sometimes I didn't, you know. 
uh, which having a craft and having that experience, if I'd started there and worked my way up, might have been, you know, that's where the, that is very important, mm -hmm. you know? But again, I, you know, I'm not complaining. That's a, hey, it's good Hey, problem. when you get so, called to the you, big leagues like that, you go. You go yeah. and yeah. then you deal with everything afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but it's, 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 it's made me really appreciate you know, even being in class and teaching now and understanding the importance of trying to. And someone said, the student asked me, because I kind of told this story, someone asked me, and, I said, and they said, is, that, is this why you teach the way you do so you don't end up, you know, have the same feeling that you had when you were in the room? I said, I don't think, I don't think I consciously, but maybe in a way, you know, I know how I felt when I was unprepared in the room because I didn't have the craft that I don't want other, other people to kind of, be in that position. Mm. It sucks. It's the worst. When you don't have the thing, you were, you, you, you're in there and you don't have the confidence of what you do. Mm. You know, that you, you know, that now when you do go in and you know, hey, this is, this is my job. This is what I am a craft. I'm a plumber. I'm a roofer. I'm that guy. I'm a surgeon. That's what I do, you know, and you go in there and do it from that place as opposed to going in there and trying to prove to them you know, you know how to do what, you know, do that thing. If you're going in a room trying to prove to them you know how to act, you're in a bad place. And that's where I spent, that's where I was for a long time. Mm. Uh, so it was, you know, it is what it is. I'm, again, it's good stories. <laughs>